Hi, I'm Cliff, N4CCB, and today I want to make a little mini review of the Oak Hills Research 100A QRP transceiver. Now, I just built one of these, and this is what it looks like. Kind of basic, but nice looking. A nice painted silk screened cover. Uh, it's really pretty. Um, I did add the uh, internal keyer. So I've got a speed uh, knob here and a paddle jack that you wouldn't have otherwise. Um, it, was a, it was a fun kit to build and my bottom line is I do recommend it. It works great. It's a nice radio and it's not that hard to put together. Now, having said that, there are a few things that can trip you up. Um, this is the third radio that I've built so I don't have a tremendous amount of experience, but um, there are a few things that would trip up a beginner. Um, one thing is that the, uh, when you're doing the inventory, they list all the parts, and the first thing that you do is to go through all the parts that they send you and make sure that you've got everything. And if you're missing something, they'll send you another part. But uh, there are some things in here like, for example, um, Early on, you're looking for six little tiny capacitors, and they say that their, the markings on the capacitors should say 82. Well, they actually say 820. So if you don't know that the 820 little capacitor is actually the 82, you might be tripped up by that. So the thing to do is just set those aside, and when you're finished, if there's nothing left but the 820s and the 82 is what you're looking for, use it. Um, something else that could trip you up there are, there are quite a few steps that have a lot of text. Uh, and if you try to read the whole paragraph and process it, you just can't. You have to take it sentence by sentence. So it'll say, you know, do this, do this, do this. You can't just remember all that. You have to take it step by step. However, if you do that, you can get tripped up. For example, I had built the radio. Uh, I had triple checked everything as I went because I didn't want to have built it and then have problems. So it came time to do the alignment and the first sentence of the alignment process is to spread or compress the turns at L114 to get the frequency set to 16 megahertz. Well, L14 is a little toroid, you know, with windings. And when I hooked it up to my frequency counter, it was at around 20 megahertz instead of 16. So I started, you know, compressing and expanding the windings, you know, reaching my fingers down inside there. And it was changing very little. And there was no way it was going to change to get down to 16 megahertz. So I thought, well, maybe I've got some kind of cold, you know, solder joint or some solder bridge or something. So I painstakingly reheated every single solder joint on the back of that board and um, hooked it up again. Same thing still reading around 20 megahertz. Well, the next sentence says, adjust trim caps C172 and C191, which are little capacitor, you know, trim capacitors, for maximum voltage at the frequency of 16 megahertz. Well, I wasn't at 16 megahertz, so why would I bother doing that? The third sentence says, you may have to adjust the caps for a peak before you're able to read the frequency. Well, I was able to read the frequency the, just the frequency was around 20 megahertz instead of 16. So after I had, you know, reheated every solder joint to make sure it wasn't some kind of mistake on my part, I just started tweaking the capacitors. And guess what? Frequency dropped down to 16 megahertz where it should have been. Now, if you are really smart about these things and you know that the inductor and the capacitor is a tuned circuit, and that changing the value of the capacitor changes the frequency of that circuit, then you would have been smart enough to not take this literally and try to go step by step. <clears throat> but I wasn't that smart. Even though I had just, I've just built uh, uh, some bandpass filters recently and I know all about tuned circuits. So when I hit rock bottom and couldn't go any further because I couldn't make this thing move, I just started tweaking the capacitors as though it were okay. And sure enough, the frequency dropped I got it rock solid at 16 megahertz. I was able to adjust these trim capacitors. Life was good. 
But that definitely tripped me up, and it would trip up somebody who's uh, not a very experienced builder. So um, <clears throat> common sense and a little bit of experience would, would fix that. Now, one other thing that, that can trip you up is that there are some errors in the documentation. <clears throat> not big errors, but when I installed the keyer, um, the first step in installing the keyer in the radio says to unplug the Molex connectors from J100 located near the center of the radio circuit board and J104 located at the front left. Well, it's not J100, it's P100. And it's not J104, it's P105. So if you're trying to follow this, you're scratching your head saying, what do you mean J104? P104 is nowhere near the front left of the circuit board. P105 is. And so, you know, what I did was I just left all of those plugged in in the, in the front of the circuit board until I got to the step where I was going to have to solder this red wire up front. And then I saw, oh, well, it's P105 that's kind of in the way that they want you to remove. Again, common sense. Um, so I guess one thing I would like to see is, you know, this is the age of the Internet. There's no reason why there can't be a web page that shows photographs of, the, of some of these steps anyway. Most of them, the large majority of them are totally fine. And, and I built the radio. I aligned it. It's great. So I had some trouble, but I didn't have insurmountable trouble. And I didn't have to contact the, the guy to ask him about these things, uh, Marshall Elam, who, by the way, when I did ask him a question about a, a particular path that I was afraid that I had created a solder bridge, and asked him if it was okay for these two, which were close together, to have a solder bridge, he wrote back pretty much immediately and said, yeah, that's going to be fine. Um, so it, it is a nice radio, but you know, I would like to see them uh, go back through the documentation and make sure that it's right. And uh, I'd like to see a page on the website that has some step-by-step -step instructions with photographs. You know, that's free. That's, that's free to do. Take the pictures, put them on the web, let somebody have the instructions on the web and show how to do it. Um, anyway, that's just me nitpicking. Uh, as I said, the bottom line is I, I do think it's a good radio and, uh, and I'm glad to have it and it's, it's fun. So um, don't want to be too harsh because I don't want to discourage anybody from building something like this or, or, or from somebody from manufacturing something like this. But you know, just uh, the human factor, it could, could definitely use just a little bit of tweaking to make it a little easier to understand for somebody who's not uh, uh, electronics whiz. So there you go. I uh, hope that helps and I uh, want to encourage you to, to build something. Uh, this radio would be a good thing to build, but uh, it's fun to build things and uh, it's kind of therapeutic to solder because when you're soldering something, you can't think about anything else in the world all of your problems disappear. All you're thinking about is, please don't let me burn myself with this 700 degree soldering iron and, uh, and the fun that you're going to have once you finish building this thing. So anyway, that's my take on it. And uh, uh, thanks for watching. See you.